Hey, we're here on Drinking With O, the show that's a conversation at a bar. Today, I'm here with owner Stacy of Stacy's at Melrose. How you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited. Yeah? Yeah. So, well, what are we starting off? What's our first drink gonna be? Let's have a little shot of Jack Fire. All right. Cheers, welcome. Cheers, man. Yeah? I, all right, you know, I gotta <laughs> say, it's not as bad as Fireball. And we, I did Fireball on the last one, and, uh -huh. and it was pretty good. They had mixed with some stuff, but that's not too bad. It tastes I just like, like it. Red Hots. It, it's too, it's too, Fireball's too sweet. Right? Yeah, I agree. And this is, this tastes just like Red Hots, which I feel like I used to eat those and think that I was like taking pills or something as a kid. <laughs> so I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> you weren't really taking pills as a kid? Oh, I don't know. I was I'll eating a lot of Red Hots, but cheers, cheers. now. We'll wash it down with a little cool Bud Light. Try to get that sponsorship. And uh, so tell me a little bit about when you guys opened. How long have you guys been open? I, we opened on May 17th of 2013. Okay. And it was a quick thing. I bought it, bought the place April 24th. Okay, wow. And, yeah, and three and a half weeks later I was open. Wow, what was it? Was it a bar prior, I guess? It's, it's been a bar continuously operated for over 35, 40 years. Wow, and how many? Many how, different ones. Yeah. Like, yeah. How many iterations do you think have, have there been in terms of you know, has it been 50 bars, 10 bars? I know since 91, it's been a total, including this one, of nine. Oh, okay, wow. And the decor is, uh, is pretty unique. Uh, what, what, what kind of was this? Gothic. Okay, so prior to this, did it, they decorate it in this fashion? Or what was this building originally? Do you know? It was always a bar. Always a bar. Okay. To my, to my knowledge. Yeah. And it goes back to the early 70s when it was built. Uh, prior to this was Sanctum, a uh, Gothic bar. And then when I came in and bought it, I'm like, this is a little too dark. So I brightened it up a little, yeah. got rid of a few slimy things <laughs> and uh, made it what you see now. And then I uh, put on the whole patio. That used to be a parking lot out there. So oh, really? that was okay. a big venture. It took three months to get oh, done. Oh, wow. I bet. Yeah. But okay. most of my clientele, I mean, you come in here on a Saturday night and it's busy in here, but out there you can't move. Yeah, they I can love the patio. Yeah. So what, what are some of the issues that you guys came into when you started opening the bar? Was it just smooth or did you have to, I mean, because you opened pretty quick. Uh, well, a little history. I had been bartending in this city for 14 years. Oh, okay. And uh, as we may talk about later, won lots of awards and I can't bartend, I'm just a nice guy. Yeah. And I treat everybody <laughs> nice, so they want me to wait on them and make them a bad drink. Not true. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> So I was pretty well known in the city yeah. in 2013 and I opened the bar and night number one, the owner uh, of the building who sold me the business said, I should have asked you to be the manager. And I looked up at him and said, too late now. It's not, <laughs> and it just never stopped. Yeah. I mean, we have our little lull during the summer when everybody wants to get out of the heat, but that's even decreased over the years. Yeah. My business has gone up every year for the four and a half, almost five years I've been here now. That's fantastic. Um, do you do you find that it's a lot of returning clientele who this is their favorite place to drink, or do you get a lot of foot traffic? Because I mean, you, Melrose is pretty popular anyway. It is a foot yeah. traffic area, yeah. yeah. I, I have seen a change in the people that come in the bar over four and a half years in that people that I knew from being a bartender would be coming in here a lot more than they do now. Yeah. And I think it was because we were new and they wanted to be part of a new bar in town. And uh, now that, I don't know that they're going to other bars, but I think they just don't come in as much as at inset. Yeah. And the traffic I'm getting now, uh, as you can imagine, I open every day except Sunday at four. And the four to eight or nine traffic is people my age mm -hmm. um, and maybe a little younger. <laughs> and uh, then at 8.30, 9.30 every day, the, we change into a dance bar yeah. or a karaoke bar or yeah. a what we call a songo bar. <laughs> um, so we've got a, a wide variety of clientele that comes at yeah. this bar. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I know, I saw the four disco balls. I was yeah. like, I know that people are, people are <laughs> dancing in here. <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. Last night at, I don't know, 9.30, I'm looking around, I'm like, it's a slow start for a Saturday. By 10 o'clock, it was packed, the dance floor, you couldn't move. Yeah. 
Do you move the stuff out? Like so? Yeah. This this leather furniture mm-hmm. goes up on the sofa area over there with the oh, little okay. red carpet, the yeah, yeah. area, and um, it's just a lounge area. But I've started after four and a half years, and for four and a half years, saying I'm never going to do drag. <laughs> the first Sunday of January, I started a drag show. So we've moved it all out. We've created a stage, and that becomes the drag queen chest uh, changing room. Is it? Is that pretty popular night? The drag night? It la- the last weekend, my second Sunday of doing it. Okay. The sales surpassed Friday and Saturday. Really? So it's on Sunday. On Sunday. That's shocking. That's yeah, great, though. Yeah. But I now Martin it. Luther King oh, holiday yeah. was the next day. Oh, so people are out partying. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm not part of the drag scene. I yeah. love going to the shows. Yeah. I don't know their names. I, I can't even remember your name. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. You just call me. And it, it's just amazing how having a... Y'all forgot to tell me to turn my phone off. So where was I? I'm so old, weird. I forget. <laughs> so we were just talking about you saying the sales for the drag night that it, you it, weren't it, keen on surpassed. Yeah, and I, it, I think it's the fact that a really popular bar who's changing all the time, always do new stuff, Yeah, finally has accepted doing drag at their bar. Yeah. And you know, my consternation, my worry was always, where are they gonna change? And I figured that out. Yeah. So I, I think it's the newness and I hope it doesn't wear off. Mm-hmm. I've got a group of four people that are running it for me uh, and they do an exquisite job mm-hmm. with VIP seating, with the leather sofas and all around the railings. And it just works really yeah. well. Do you feel like you have to come up with lots of stuff like that to keep your bar fresh or? All the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could name other bars that I go to because I go to all the other bars. Yeah. In the loca- you know, in the geographical yeah. location. And you go in there, it's the same every day. Yeah. Never changes. I go to a bar that's a block from my house, and every night it's my nightcap with my final Bud Light just to sort of uh, relax a little. Yeah. Nothing's changed in there for years. It's just the same. Yeah. And but, I mean, it keeps a certain amount of clientele, but also, I know you mean to, bar. Yeah, but sometimes you want to do go to something that's at least going to be exciting or different. I mean, I know a lot of bars will do like trivia, and that's kind of like yeah. the staple. You guys ever toy around with that idea or not too much? Um, I try to, when I opened the bar, mm-hmm. I took a couple of magazines, read the specials of other bars in this area, and I said, well, I don't want to hurt anyone. I just want to be part of this. Yeah. So if somebody else was having karaoke, I wouldn't do it that night. I'd yeah. do it a different night. So I have not done trivia because there are too many other bars doing it. Yeah. So, you know, I do karaoke on a night when nobody in this geographical area is doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do something that no one else is doing in the area, which is called songo. And instead of bingo, it's music played for 20 seconds. Yeah, tell and me a little have, about that. So it went, you have a bingo card, and instead of numbers on it, you have an artist's name. Okay. So, you know, they play something by uh, Pink, yeah. and you have to listen to it and guess who the artist is. And, and they have it Yeah. And uh, it, nobody else is doing it. That's really cool. I've and never I, heard of that. I'm actually starting it next Tuesday at my bar in Palm Springs, too. So, you know, other things that I've done different is I'll change lighting. It's a change. It yeah. may not be significant, but uh, I'll add a patio. Mm-hmm. I'll change the tabletops. And it's something that I think even though customers may not come to me and say, oh, I like the new tabletops, yeah. they notice them. Absolutely. And if you keep current and do things that other people aren't doing, um, I think it's the way to be successful. I think that's true. I think there's two ways that I've seen bars that are relatively successful operate, and, and it seems like this isn't a dive bar. So you don't want to just be like, well, right. so-and-so scratched their name in here, and we're going to leave that forever. Right. You know. So I think either the bar is a dive bar, or just like you're doing, you need to keep having new ideas, keep updating, changing little things. Yeah. I, so I think that that's, that's the way to go. Dive bars are great, and I like a lot of dive bars, but yeah. unless it's a true dive bar, then it's a fine line between, then it just looks like a shitty bar. I'll tell you, I miss, I don't know if you ever went there, I miss the old dive bar called the Mecca at 7th Avenue in Virginia. No, I've never been there. I or I, it's there. gone now. But yeah, it's gone now, it's torn down, it's parking lot. It was the most, amazingly different clientele in there all at once. Yeah. 
you know, every race, every creed, every uh, gender. It was amazing, and everybody had a great time. Yeah. Do you feel I like would, you try to pull some of that in for I, your bar? I do do that. Yeah. I have every walk of life in this bar, and they all get along together. And if they don't, I kick them out. Yeah. Do you have to, do you have to kick a lot of people out? I mean, I don't know. I've, I've never asked a bar owner. I imagine, you know, I've, I've been kicked out of the bar before. So I know that it... I'm not it's... surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think it was a mistaken identity uh, to this day. I was just standing in line for the bathroom and some big bouncer comes up behind me and just says, get the fuck out. And I just said, it's like, okay, <laughs> whatever you want. It wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say since we opened, four people have been permanently 86. Oh, really? From here. Really? Uh, two of them just malicious hammering on someone else. Wow. Uh, and two of them uh, not being nice with my bartenders. And yeah. they're the same way every time they come in. And that's going to happen. And I'll be honest with you, when you ask people to leave that are regular customers, you find out that the other regular customers are happy it happened. Yeah. Because they, they're bothered by the absolutely. idiot. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and, and plus your staff's your family. If you own the bar, Absolutely. I mean, I, I know you, you got to play favorites. There's got to be a favorite bartender. I can't say that on camera. <laughs> of course there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's my mohawk boy. Oh, he has a big mohawk? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's big. Don't he does the whole, he gels it up real high. Yeah. Ah, oh, man, that's dedication. I, yeah. I, my hair, I just wore a beanie today because I thought it'd be too much work to, to let my hair dry. I wore a beanie too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Skin colored beanie. <laughs> so let me tell you about this Mohawk boy. He's, he's an amazing bartender. He's really well known in the city. He's okay. been doing this for years and years. And one night, it was a little crowd in here and he was making four shots for people. Right here, across from me. And I'm watching him make it, and then he started shaking, and I said, hey, Ron, uh, I think you left the, whatever it was, out of that. And he's going like this, and he looks at me, and he says, oh, man, when you've won six Bartender of the Year awards, you can tell me what to do. <laughs> but until then, I got this. And I turned, and I went, okay. And I started to walk away, and I said, oh, by the way, Ron, I've won eight. So put the ingredient in there right God and do it. <laughs> but that's, wait, so who gives out best bartender awards? Well, there are two gay rags in this city. Yeah. And one of them, I would say the most red. Yeah. And the other one's great too, believe me. But mm -hmm. the one that's been around longest is Echo Magazine. And they okay. give awards every year. And I've won 20 awards. No shit. And, and you know, some of them for my bar, some yeah. of them for me, someone for helping other bars. And yeah. I just... I'm really proud of it. You should be. That, that's I'm crazy. 20 really awards. Proud, yeah. And yeah, your bartender comes at you with what? Seven. You should get that. Tell me. Six. Six. <laughs> Six. Yeah. I'm not having any of that. <laughs> that's too cool though. And do, you, do you feel like your staff, is, is it like a high retainment time? Are people working here for long periods of time? Do you have turnover like that? I have five of the original employees working wow. here for four and a half years. Wow. And I have others that have been here for over three years. And I've got a couple of new ones. Yeah. But, you know, I bring them in and I bring them in as part of the family. Whenever I post on Facebook or whenever I'm out in public or whenever I uh, write an article or do an ad in Echo or Ion AZ or even New Times, I always call it our bar. It's not yeah. my bar. It's the employees in my bar. Yeah. Because I can't do it without them. Yeah. They're Try to run it by yourself. Yeah. 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 They're the wood in my fire. They create what I have here. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure that it's that family mentality that not only keeps people sticking around, but when you don't have turnover like that, you don't have someone learning the ropes all the time. Yeah. I'm sure people come in here and they're just seasoned. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And, and, and that's really easy. Yeah. You know, you, you have two different sides of the coin here. You can bring in a really seasoned bartender like you, Yeah. but they've never worked for me and I'm OCD and you want to do it your way and that's not acceptable. If you're going to be part of we, you yeah. can do it my way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got the people that are green, have never done yeah. this before. We get to groom them. I've got employees here that can train. My manager is amazing at training. Yeah. That will say, if you want to make it here, you got to do it our way. And then have fun. Smile. Make the customer happy. If the customer wants something and you can't give it to them, say, let me see if I can do anything. And go find out a solution. Yeah. It's all about the customer. You know, 
basically my employees make the bar. Yeah. They can't do it with people without people like you, the customer. Yeah. And so. you know what's crazy is that some bars don't function, I feel like, that at all in terms of maybe they know that they're busy and that they don't have to do that kind of song and dance where they're like, let me figure that out for you, that you're like, oh, I want this, do you have this drink? And they just say, so fuck funny. you. Yeah. yeah. And I have to tell you a story. Yeah. I used to bartend at a really busy bar downtown, very popular from 99 to 09 when they finally oh, wow. closed down. Okay. And I worked there seven and a half years. And there were some Friday and Saturday nights that we were so busy. Someone would come up that I didn't know and say, will you make me something special? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I'm busy right now. <laughs> Tell me what you want or step aside. Yeah. And I would look at them and go, Next, <laughs> and make it a joke, and they're like, yeah. "I'm a vodka tonic." Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know what they want. Yeah, you know? yeah. I know you'll see some bartenders. I'll, I'll see people do that. You know, like, oh, "What? Make me something good. What's good here?" And they're like, "A uh, shot of whiskey." <laughs> yeah. That's what's good. <laughs> well, I don't want to throw it away and waste <laughs> liquor. Yeah, yeah. It's it's easy to please the public if you do it with a smile. Yeah, even if they're the angry people. Yeah, I'm sure you got you get or drunk people. coming in here. Oh, yeah? The, uh, you guys get overflow from some bar that maybe they got kicked out? Well, we have a lot of bars on this strip. Yeah. It's very easy to walk from one to me to the next to the next. And, you know, then we get them on the round going south. It, it's really difficult for me to, you know, say be number two on that route. Totally. And all of a sudden they've gotten to the end and they're coming back and I'm number seven now. And they're drunk as hell and I shouldn't serve them. Yeah. Well... I know you're not going to believe this, or Certainly. maybe you will, but I'm the first one to tell my bartenders to cut people off. Oh, yeah? Because we're responsible for them. It is a liability. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it's not just a liability. I don't want you to be number seven on your seventh yeah. bar and you That's leave true. here and go kill yourself. That's true. I don't want that to happen. That's true. I know. Shoot, man. Maybe maybe you'll have to 86 me from this bar. You'll say, tell uh, me about it. I don't think so. <laughs> All right, well, maybe uh, let's get into Not until after this interview, anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's get into one more drink. Wow, you finished with I, I, don't, I, I do don't mean like to. your drinking yeah. habit. All right, so Stacy, tell me a little bit about what we're drinking now. Well, the Bud Light seemed a little boring yeah. for us, so <laughs> let's move on to Stacy's Palmer. Okay, this is Stacy's Palmer. Stacy's Palmer, not, okay. not Arnie's. And it's lemon vodka, sweet tea vodka, lemonade, seven and soda. That's really With good. Lemon, isn't it great? I feel like it's dangerous. I could just like it's I could pretty, imagine just drinking these, just <laughs> hanging out, and all of a sudden four. I can't drink this much. Yeah, I'm a lightweight. A oh. bar owner, and I'm a lightweight. But you know that's not a bad thing because no. they, because you then you know like you can watch other people. I feel like if you were just a tank, you're just oh well they they can take it. They're not overserved yet. You know what I mean? The best part of being a lightweight is that my bartenders. When they know I can't drive, yeah, they tell me you're not driving, and they call me an Uber. <laughs> hey, I and mean, they're great. That you know, and how much better is it to do Uber instead of a taxi? Oh my gosh, or Lyft. And you know what yeah. I do? I don't even have a budget for this. Yeah, I get customers that are drunk, mm -hmm. and I won't let them drive. Mm -hmm. I will pay for their taxi or Uber or Lyft home. That's awesome. I do it probably hundred and fifty dollars a week really yeah that's a lot but you know what like it's you went back to it. yeah you know you care about and a lot of return customers you care about how people are i mean even even the ones that are here for the first time maybe they'll be a return customer but it's really not about that i'm yeah. really a humanist that doesn't want anybody to get hurt yeah and i don't want them going to another bar and making a fool of themselves and say i was at stacy's <laughs> <I hear you. laughs> so you guys have been open for a couple of years now yeah and you're looking to obviously be open for many more. Do, yeah. do you see this bar as something that you're doing? And then if you get an offer, you you would be excited to get out? Or is this more of a passion thing that, I mean, I, I know you're opening go, more. Uh, I won't go too far into it, but I've had a really, really good offer on this business. And I just said, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, this, I mean, I spend more time here than at my home because I'm comfortable here. My friends are all here. My employees and I are all buddies. Um, it, I, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And you know, I expanded into Palm Springs and Palm Springs is a really, here we have a Gothic bar. Yeah. Palm Springs, I have a beautiful art deco, small, mm -hmm. but piano bar with soft music at all times. Cool. And a pat patio and a pianist six times a week for wow. four hours. And 
it's just what the doctor ordered out there. Yeah. There had been one five years ago and it was gone when the last time I went back and I'm like, let's do something out there to get these people in it and it's working. Yeah? It's everything's going. And how long is that one in Palm Springs? Though? Three months. Three oh wow. So Three it's, months. It's brand new. But it's new. going great. Yeah. That's it awesome. Is. And my manager, Sean, is Amazing. I don't, I, I don't even think about the place except for the end of the night when I'm looking at sales. <laughs> That's um, fantastic. It's fun. I really have an aspiration to do a third bar. And in, I was interested in San Diego, but I think I'm going to keep it close to home because I really hate to be away from here when I yeah. go out there for once, for a week, once a month to let Sean come visit his family in Phoenix. I just, I, I miss it here. Yeah. So I'm thinking I want to do a <laughs> big dance bar. Yeah? And I mean a club. Yeah. Well, what, what area would be ideal for you? I have a building picked out. I don't know if they'll let me do it. I've okay. approached them before six years ago, but it's within a mile of here. And I would just like to have a, not even open till 8 p.m. at night and yeah. go till 4 in the morning and quit liquor at 2. Mm -hmm. Charlie's does that. Charlie's yeah, really successful. Yeah, I was going to say, I've been to Charlie's and yeah, and yeah I've they do that after hours. You know, sleep. they take all the drinks off the table by 2.30 and then they start serving non-alcoholic beverages. I'd like to do something like that because it's missing from Central Phoenix. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, Charlie's is, where, where are they located? A little ways. They're away. three quarters of a mile. Oh, really? Here. They're at the corner of Camelback and uh, 7th Avenue. Yeah, but in this immediate Melrose area. Yeah, yeah they're part of Melrose. They're an okay. associate member. I'm actually a, a member of the 7th Avenue Merchant Association. They are not on 7th Avenue, so they're an associate member. Okay, very cool. And so is that something you've been thinking about for a long time? Or is that more... Since old? a month after I opened this one. Oh, really? This is going really well. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to leave something to my daughter. <laughs> a um, collection of profitable bars would be my, pretty yeah, nice. My yeah, my daughter <laughs> says, well, when you die, I'm going to close them and take <laughs> the money. But I got to make her some money. It, it's fun. It's yeah. my life. I started out first, or when I was one year old, my folks bought a bar and restaurant, opened a bar restaurant, and they did great for 29 years. Mm -hmm. And it's in my blood. Yeah. I've always been in the business. Even when I was a branch manager for a bank for 15 years, I still worked as a waiter at a restaurant because I couldn't get it out of my blood. This is me. Yeah. What's... I think you can ask every customer that's ever been in here about me, except for the one that got really pissed at me, but the rest of them, um, I'm all about everybody. Yeah. I mean, I, last night I was in here, I may have been a little cocktail, but not much. Okay. And I was walking up to people and saying, is this guy bothering you? <laughs> and she'd look at me like, yeah. <laughs> I'd say, come on, buddy, out. I mean, I just have a great time. Yeah. It's, it's my hood. Yeah. It really is. I think that when you find something that you really like, that there's not much more to, to think about, you know? If you enjoy it and it's going well, it sounds like a slam dunk. Absolutely, I yeah. agree. So, you know, there are a lot of bars in the central Phoenix area that are doing well. It's, yeah. It just, they've been there like bunkhouse across the street, mm -hmm. been there for years. And they have, you know, I don't want to call it a dive bar or a happy hour bar or any kind of bar, but they're my buddies, like Charlie's and like The Rock down the street. We need something, we help each other out. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've started this little thing on Facebook called uh, SOS, and it's for all the bar owners in the central Phoenix area to know if there's a problem. Like I had a graffiti scratched into my mirror one night. I mean, immediately posted it and got on the phone and called all the other bars on the strip. Said, these guys just did this to my bar. I've kicked them out permanently, watch for them. Yeah. That's so, fantastic. So I tell you, they ended up at Charlie's. Oh, Charlie's yeah. had gotten a call from me. And when they got to the front door, they said, hi, guys. I described them. Hi, guys. Come on in. But if you tag our mirrors with your knives, we're calling the police. We're not nice like Stacy. We'll put you in jail. Wow. So, you know, you got you to be neighborly. People call yeah. me. The Rock calls me. Bunkhouse calls yeah. me. Charlie's calls me. Tell me a little bit about what you see in terms of not only you spoke to opening a new bar and that being an aspiration. What do you see as kind of a five-year plan for this bar, just this location? <laughs> That's a tough one. I've got an apartment complex opening next door within three months. I'm hoping March, but probably April or May. 
were already buddies. Mm -hmm. The owner and his senior VP and the VP all came in here with their wives and got me drunk. No, maybe I got them drunk. <laughs> and they're great people. We're working together. Yeah. Uh, I'm advertising for them over my little stand over there. And they're advertising for me and they, they talk about me to their clients and say Stacy's a very nice bar and they welcoming to everyone. So that's great. I've got some neighbors back here in this empty building that have owned it for several years that are gonna that are trying to open a storage facility. And you know, that'll hurt me a little bit with parking because yeah. I've got a lot of parking I rent from them right yeah. now and it'll diminish, but we're working it out. Absolutely. Guy next door at Sunrise Market. He's hilarious. Yeah. He, he'll, he'll call me and say, one of your customers in my parking lot. And I'll say, and I'll, I'll say to him, so, <laughs> <laughs> and he hangs up on me. He's a great guy. That's awesome. I think yeah. that that's, that's a, you know, a testament to being kind of a part of the community. I think that yeah. people who are there to make a buck versus people who are there to do something for, yeah. the, for the whole environment. Yeah. You can, you can see that a mile away. Yeah. He, he gets a lot of business from me. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's an amazing guy. Yeah, and I saw you guys have almost a hundred reviews on Yelp and four and a half stars. I, I look at Yelp a lot when I'm. Do going you really? Somewhere. Did you happen to hear that last year I was one of the top fifty gay bars in the really? United States? On no Yelp. way! <laughs> That's amazing. But you know what's yeah. crazy? Because I also think four and a half stars is probably the best position. In terms of, I mean, maybe I'm a weird user, but when I see five stars, I feel like there's something fishy. Like, that's bullshit. Was it 4.5 or 4.6? I want you to go to your homework. <laughs> well, I just saw the picture. Is there have a number? So I saw the picture, and yeah. but you know when it's full five, I'm just feel like, that's bullshit. Something's going yeah. on. Like, they're having family I'm, right there. I'm at 4.9 on Facebook or Yelp for my bar in, in Palm Springs, but yeah. it shows as five stars. Yeah. I that's, love it. That's too cool. Yeah, it, it's fun. I have an amazing staff out there like I do here. Yeah. They're more seasoned out here, but now they're more seasoned here because of being here for so long. Yeah, do you ever get staff members here talking about going to Palm Springs and working at that bar? I act, my, my buddy with the Mohawk actually went out there for six weeks and helped me get the bar going. Oh, really? I yeah. was going to say, hopefully not permanently. That's your favorite no, guy. No, no. The customers here would have <laughs> slit my throat. They love him. So you guys are open seven days a week. Yep. Do you guys just take off, what, federal holidays or do you guys just stay open, period? You're gonna love this. You're gonna I get would, a tear in your eye. The only day I close is Christmas Day. I, that's a bar and for my, my own heart. And my ad says, so that my employees can be with their families and friends, we will be closed today. Yeah. Hey, I, I mean, it, it's even made five star reviews for me. Yeah. <laughs> you being so nice to your employees. That is, that is a nice thing. You know, it's but nice I kill them on New Year's Eve. Oh yeah. All yeah, staff sure. will be here New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you guys get slammed on New Year's Eve. Is yeah, that probably your, is that the craziest night at the bar? Well, it would be if it weren't for the 7th Avenue street fair. The 7th Avenue street fair is once a year, the first Saturday of every March. And it's half a mile from Indian school to Campbell. Oh, okay. And they close the street. And I, I bought horse fencing instead of renting uh, chain link fence every time. And I just take it and surround my entire parking lot all the way out to the street. And wow. it that day doubles New Year's Eve. New Year's really? Eve. It's the biggest day of the year, hands down. How do you staff for that? Because I mean, uh, you I have even, a certain amount of space. I even bring in staff from other places. Really? Yeah. I That's have bartenders. Let me tell you what, isn't it great that I trade bartenders? Charlie's and I once a year oh, trade really? bartenders. Yeah. <laughs> I've asked bartenders from other bars to come over here and help us. They've asked me for help. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine with that level of people, do you have to, are you trying to just kind of burn them and turn them like, hey, here's your drink and then they take off? Because I mean, well, well I'm going to tell you, yeah. from the day when I, days when I worked at that bar I mentioned earlier, Amsterdam, there were times when I didn't have time to do anything friendly but smile. Mm -hmm. Hey, what you having? Yeah. It was even fake. Just tell me what you want. <laughs> um, there are times when you just can't have a conversation with a customer. Yeah. And it happens here every Friday night, every Saturday night, and now every Sunday night. Um, my Sunday afternoon from 2 to 7 is slammed in here. And now you guys will probably be here when I tell you that it's a dollar fifty 
Rolling Rock Draft and a dollar fifty well drinks on Sunday. I might be, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it slammed in here. Yeah, and now Annie won the drag show from seven to nine. It slammed all night. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a really good feeling to be able to try something new that I promised the community I would never do. And <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm going to say a funny little gay slur. I when I first announced it on Facebook, which is most of my advertising besides the the rags. Yeah. I said, uh, four and a half years ago when I opened the bar, I said I would never do drag. My next sentence was, it's a girl's prerogative <laughs> to change her mind, <laughs> and I have decided to do drag. Hope you'll join us for our first drag show on January 6th. Blah, blah, blah. And it's just been a Yeah, I was going to say, look how it turned out. Yeah. Yeah, so it seems like that was definitely a good thing. Is there anything that you're calling out now that you won't do? that you're saying, at this bar, I don't want to do this ever. I don't know if I can say that on camera. No, <laughs> you know, when I opened, I said, yeah. I won't hurt the other businesses, mm -hmm. unless they hurt me first. Um, I won't do drag shows. I won't do game bar yeah. with video games and pool tables and dark games and yeah. stuff like that. And I'm sticking to that gun for a while, except someone did just give me a really beautiful regulation pool table that I could oh, put really? right over there. I was going to uh, say. We don't know about that. I don't put TVs all over the bar. Yeah. But you know, I'm unique when I think of things. If I'm going to go outside of my box of not doing all these things, um, I have a uh, Super Bowl was the first day I did it. I have this big, long metal cord up here and I have a, I can't even remember what that material is, a stretchy spandex okay. screen. And I show the, the Super Bowl back here oh, okay. from a projector above our head. And, you know, I'll do the Academy Awards and I'll do RuPaul's Drag Races. And I'll even pull out TVs everywhere. But they're not sitting around where you can sit here and go like this. Yeah. When you come to my bar, I want you talking to people. Yeah. And I think that makes it look like it's like a Buffalo Wild Wings or something. Absolutely. When there's just a ton of bar, yeah. a ton of TVs. Yeah. I, I also think that's So cool. I, don't, I don't do a whole bunch of TVs except for special occasions. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's another thing that I'm sticking to my guns until I change my mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the games, the drag show, I've already broken that promise. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else. You know, uh, last year I won, I think, I personally think this is unheard of. I won uh, New Times, you know New Times? Yeah, of course New Times. Yeah. New Times, I won their Lesbian Bar of the Year. Really? And some guys have come up to me and said, congratulations for that. And, you know, there was a time back in the 80s and 90s that the gay boys and the lesbian girls didn't really get along. Mm -hmm. But look at us now. I, I wish you could have been here last night. I had every walk of life in here. Yeah. And I visited and talked to everyone. Yeah. And I walk up to some chick I'd never seen before and I went, on her cheek, and she goes, excuse me? I said, I'm Stacy, I'm just glad you're here. And I walked away and I came back a little while later and walked by her and she said, that was sweet. Oh, so, <laughs> well, do you let them know that you're the owner? Or do they just think like, man, this guy's wasted? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I mean, like I said earlier, I'll, I'll walk up and say, is this guy bothering you? And yeah, yeah. I, I just have a great time. If I don't have a great time, they're not going to have a great time. I think that that's got to be true. And when you see the bartenders and the staff and the, especially the owner stressed out, all buttoned up, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable. And I'm, if I'm having a drink at a bar, I'm trying to relax. Well, I mean, who, besides maybe a security guy, who's your first contact at a bar? The guy that's going to be making your juices all day. Yeah, night. absolutely. And, and they have to take care of you. They can't just say, here's your Bud Light. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and it's all about sales. And I tell them not to do it too often. But if you come up and say, give me a Stacy's Palmer. And yeah. they say, here you go. Would you like a, a shot of Jack Fire with that? And I'm good with that a time or two. But I don't want them getting drunk and hurting themselves when they leave. Definitely. Definitely. Or go into another bar and say, yeah, Stacy got me this Yeah, <laughs> It's crazy. No, it's true. I think that all that really stems from, or is a testament at least, to your community ties with this area. It seems like you've been here for long enough and you've been a part of the community long enough that, that you have some sort of kind of buy-in that you want to make sure everyone's doing good. Which I do. It's something that I don't see everywhere. You know, I think downtown's a little bit more cutthroat because... Absolutely. Well, there's so many of them opening up down there and they're all really cool places. Yeah. I have friends that are opening two different places down there and I'm really wishing them luck. Yeah. 
Um, so, you know, I'm, this is really a personal back padding of my own, yeah. but I'm really proud of the fact that I have this TV over there, 42 inch that's inverted and it's okay. yeah. portrait instead of landscape. And I use it for advertising. And my other buddies that own other bars in the area, like this is even from Scottsdale, BS West, he's a really good friend of mine, uh, Mike Cornelli. And I'll even put his ads up that compete with my nights, like New Year's Eve. Yeah. I'll put his ad up to let people know alternative things they could do besides just here. Yeah. And I, it, they're, they're flabbergasted when I do that. And I'm like, we're all a big group of bars. Why aren't we going to help each other? I think that's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you Hold taking on. the time. Oh, yeah. I was going <laughs> to okay. say, give yourself a couple <laughs> extra pass for that one. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit here and talk with us and for being on Drinking With O. And I'm really excited to, to be a regular now on Sundays here with Dollar 50 <laughs> rolling off and see the show. <laughs> well, we're not done yet because I have one more thing I have to tell you about. Yes. I broke my code and I'm doing drag shows now every Sunday. <laughs> yeah. So I had this alternative drag queen contact me. I've okay. known her for years. Okay. His name is Nathan. And uh, I don't know if you or the watchers have ever heard of Dragula. I've never heard it's of Dragula. It's a YouTube thing, and it's sort of like a uh, RuPaul show, okay. but not for just beautiful, not just for men being beautiful women. It's about humans being whatever they want. So it's not, it's not just vampire. I mean, because the name would make me think vampire. Dracula. Yeah. Well, if you go, I watched uh, year two, seri uh, series two, number three episode, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm starting that here, the oh, second yeah? Tuesday of, of uh, February. Okay, second Tuesday. And I've got one of the drag. Actually, I've got two of the Dragula contestants for this season two, which just ended yeah. last week. So Tuesday night, starting at nine, we're going to do Dragula. No way. I'm going to have to come check that out. I, w he's named it, but I have to figure out a way to make it Stacy's. Yeah. Like my Sunday drag show is called Stacy's Follies. Okay. So I think everybody in the world needs to come see this just once. Yeah and decide hey. if this is something for me or something not for me. Uh, I'm excited about it. Yeah. As excited as I am for the success of the Sunday night show. You know what? And one more thing to say. Oh, of course. I had no idea what you guys were talking about. Yeah. And when Iman called me, <laughs> he's standing over there off camera, <laughs> uh, another hottie like, oh, uh, this is amazing that y'all are doing this. Not just for me. I'm glad to be out there yeah. like this. I'm, uh, um, <laughs> I think this is amazing that y'all are doing this. Hey, it, we could not be more excited. We love to go out to bars. We love the areas that we live in. And to showcase a little taste of that is nothing but fun for us. I want to be on your next series, too. Yeah, <laughs> hey, season two, we're coming back. Season two. Season, cheers to season two, man. Yeah.